The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... G. Marshall. God works in mysterious ways, we are told, his wonders to perform. And certainly the strange story I bring you now testifies to that. It is a story of horror indescribable, and yet of love unbounded, of nameless terror, and yet of sweet and gentle fulfillment. It is the story of what befell Kenneth Robinson, Professor Kenneth Robinson, I should say, when he delved too deeply and, yes, too arrogantly into cosmic mysteries which are perhaps best left alone. But you don't understand, Mildred. You don't understand. Ken, darling, what is there to understand? This isn't the first time you've made your spirit, your your astral body, leave you and go wandering. Mildred. But, darling, even when I saw you lying there on the couch seemingly dead, I, I wasn't afraid. Not the way I was the first time. I knew you'd done it again. Made your astral body... But I body... didn't. I didn't. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Mildred, heaven help me. This time my astral body left of its own accord. I've lost control over my own spirit, Mildred. Completely lost control. <laughs> mystery drama, Where Angels Fear to Tread, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by George Lothar and stars Michael Tolan. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Uncle Ben's Long Grain and Wild Rice. I'll be back shortly with Act One. the life we live in between. At this very moment, scientists all over our globe are seeking the answers to these mysteries, or the one great mystery it may be. Some there are who say, don't do it. If God in his infinite wisdom had meant us to know the answers, he'd have revealed them. Others are of a different mind. They say the mysteries were put there to be unraveled. The answer is found. One who believed this is Kenneth Robinson, professor of parapsychology at Mallory College in New England. One night, not long ago, about one o'clock in the morning, in the living room of the Robinson house... Ken? Ken, dear? (laughs) Wouldn't you know, falling asleep on the couch again? Oh, Ken. Honey, come on, wake up and come to bed. You can't sleep here on the couch all night. Ken? Ken? Oh, no. No, he's not. He, he, he can't be. Not, not dead. No, Mildred. No, I'm not dead. No pulse, no heartbeat. Millie, oh, can't, can't you hear me? I'm not dead. I can see myself on the couch. I can't, I can't See you kneeling beside me, crying. But, sweetheart, I'm not dead. I must call Dr. Dutton. Yes, I'll call Junius. Oh. Millie, uh, no, don't call Dutton. I'll be all right again in a second or so. Just as soon as my spirit returns to my body. Oh. What? what? Oh. Where? Oh. Oh, you're alive. Darling, you're alive. Millie, Millie, what's the matter with you? Of course I'm alive. I knocked myself out studying, stretched out on the couch, and fell asleep. That's all. Oh. Or I... I think that's all. Oh, no, darling, it isn't all. By no means all. Ken, Ken, I think you've done it. Done it? I I thought you were just asleep. But your body felt cold. I couldn't get a pulse. Wait, it's... It's coming back now. What, darling? What? what? Will you give me a minute? Hmm? Yes. Yes, I... 
I could see you kneeling beside me on the couch. Hear you crying, and I... I I talked to you. I said, don't call Dutton. I'm not dead. Oh, Ken. Wait, it's the breakthrough you've been after for years. Maybe. Yes, maybe. But let, let me try to remember more of what happened. Mm-hmm. When I... When I stretched out to rest, I started doing the Kapala body. Oh, the recharging breath. Yes, to restore my energy. I wanted to study at least for another hour or two. But then... Yes. That's when it happened. I... I I can't describe it. There seemed to be a gathering together of some vital force inside me. Gathering itself together as if to make a supreme effort of some sort. Millie. It was my Atman. My spirit preparing to leave my body. Oh, Ken. And it did. It gathered itself together in my head. And then... And then it was like... Like a bubble outside my head, but attached to it. Like like a bubble on a bubble pipe, you know? Oh, yes, yes. And then suddenly, the bubble broke loose and... And Millie. Millie, there I was. Standing beside my own body and looking down as it lay stretched out on the couch. Oh, Ken, this... It's incredible. No, no. Not really. You've more than proved Dr. Dutton's faith in you when he gave you the chair in parapsychology. What is it? Why the sudden frown? I, uh... I can't remember where I went or what I did. Oh, what do you mean, dear? My... my astral body. I have no recollection of where it went. What it did while it was free. Well, did it go somewhere? I... I'm not sure. I... I have the feeling it did, but... but no recollection. I... I almost know. I I went somewhere, did something, but it's all a blank. Ken, you you look worried. No, no, not not worried. Curious, that's all. Curious. I'll answer, Ken. Yes? Uh, Mrs. Robinson? Yes? Uh, my name's Peters, Ed Peters. The uh, folks around now, they call me Bub. Oh, oh, yes, I've heard of you. You, you own the uh, cider mill, I think. Uh, yes, ma'am. Your husband home? Yes. I wonder uh, I could see him for a minute? Well, I suppose. Yes, well, come in. Oh, thank you. Yeah, this way. Oh, Ken, dear, this is Mr. Peters. Uh, Bob Peters he owns the cider mill. Oh, yes, yes, we've met before. I hope you're still keeping our students out of your place, Mr. Peters. Oh, yes, yes. You only had to tell me once that you wanted off-limits, and off-limits it became. Oh, for the students, anyway. Well, what can I do for you, Mr. Peters? Uh, can I see you along for a minute? Oh, well, well No, I'm... no, Millie, I'm sure anything you have to say can be said in front of my wife, Mr. Peters. Well... It's okay with you. Why shouldn't it be? Uh, it's about last night. What about last night? Now, uh, look now, Professor, I, I don't want to make it in trouble. Uh, you weren't all that drunk you're pulling a blank about what happened in my place? Your place? The, the cider mill? Uh, yes, ma'am. What, are you saying that I was in the cider mill last night? Are you saying you weren't? Well, of course I wasn't. I was right here at home. My wife will tell you that. Well, I, I got witnesses, Professor. Now, look, I don't want any trouble. All I want is for you to pay for the damage you've done, that's all. Damage? You wrecked the joint, Professor. You know that. Busted chairs, smashed the mirror over the bar, and... Well, here's a list. If you just pay it, we'll say no more about it. What? Six hundred? I was in the cider mill last night drunk? Me? And I wrecked... Unless you got a twin brother. No, I don't even have a brother. Well, like I said, now, no trouble. It wouldn't be good for me, and it sure wouldn't be good for you. So, uh, send me a check, huh? I, I can see my way out. No, wait, be- before you go... Yeah? Tell me exactly what happened, exactly what I did, or what you say I did. Oh, you did, all right. I got witnesses. You come in smashed. What time? Oh, around one in the morning. Go on. 
Well, like I said, you come in juiced real high and you start hitting the booze like it's going out of style, one drink after another. Then uh, you started getting a little too free and easy with the girls at your table. The girls at his table? Uh, Hostesses. Three of them. One wasn't enough, he said. He starts to get a little, you might say, too handy with them and... I told him to cool it in a nice way. I told him, believe me, but, uh, well, that's when he throws a punch and well, that began it. <laughs> you know, Professor, even though I saw it myself and I got witnesses, <laughs> looking at you now, even I find it hard to believe. <laughs> uh, well, I'll be expecting your check. Well, I... I guess now we know where your astral body went. Worse. We know what it did. Yes, Junius, uh, there's the list Peter's handed me, the list of damages. Mm hmm. And you say he has witnesses? Yes. Well, you'd better pay this bill and avoid any further publicity for yourself and Mallory College. And you'd better stop your experiments in astral projection. You don't really mean that, Junior. I do. You know, I've been against them from the start. Well, if that's so, why did you found a chair in parapsychology and appoint me to fill it? Oh, come on, Ken. You know I had to establish the chair. It was one of the provisions of Septimus Mallory's will. Okay, but I've, I've been Mallory doing my... believed in life after death. And that's why he wanted the chair in parapsychology, to pursue the study of the paranormal. Which is what I've been doing. Yes, but far beyond what was expected. You were simply to pursue investigations into ESP, psychokinesis, this sort of thing. Not anything so dangerous as astral projection. Dangerous? In the sense that you're trespassing on God's domain, rushing in where angels fear to tread. Oh, come on now, Junius. Drop these experiments, Ken. I can't. Not now. Not when I'm beginning to meet with success. Success? To judge from what happened last night, wouldn't the more precise word be disaster? I must go on, Junius. I can't stop now. In that case, Ken, God... No. I was about to say God be with you. But I don't think he can be. Let me say, in that case, God protect you. I have a feeling you're going to need it. Junius, thank you for coming straight over. Where is it? On the couch in the living room. No pulse, you say? Just like the other night, so I... Mm. He, he, he's not dead. That I know. All right, all right. No. The faintest heartbeat. Almost impossible to detect, but it's there. Oh. Uh, tell me, Mildred, was this an experiment tonight, uh... uh was it a controlled experiment, not an accident like the first time? Oh, controlled. You see, he, he lay down on the couch and began doing some, some breathing exercises. And then his breathing seemed to slow down and finally stop altogether. Uh-huh. I, I asked him if he was all right, but I got no answer. Then I was about to ask him again when, when he sighed. It, it was a sort of a long sigh of relief, and somehow I knew that was the moment... His astral body had left him. And you called me. Well, it scares me, Junius. I, I needed someone with me, someone like you. I, I, I keep wondering, where is he? Or, or it, whatever uh, it is. Uh, Junius. Yeah, wait a minute. Uh, he's, he's coming around. Oh, Ken. Oh, Ken. Oh, Junius. Oh, Ken, darling. Oh, sweetheart, I... I I saw you again. You and Junius. I saw you here with my earthly body stretched on the couch. I I heard you talking, everything you said. And this time, this time it seems to me I can remember, almost remember, where I went and what I did. My my recall is better, much better than the first time, and I I Yes, Ken. You what? Ken? I... I can't be sure, but... But Millie... Junius... 
What, Ken? What? I think I killed someone. Murdered someone. Well, I'll tell you this. Were it not for my own experiments in the paranormal, I'd find Ken Robinson's experience hard to swallow. But I personally have seen things, experienced things, which simply have no normal explanation. And frankly, at this time of my life, I'd as soon have no more to do with them. I'd rather expect Ken Robinson feels the same way. I'll return in a moment. As far as Dr. Junius Dutton of Mallory College is concerned, man had best not rush in where angels fear to tread, which is, of course, what Ken Robinson, professor of parapsychology, has done. By means of extraordinary disciplines, he has at last succeeded in freeing his astral body from its earthly prison, succeeded to his horror. I think I killed someone. Murdered someone. Ken! Easy, Mildred, easy. Go on, Ken. I... I can't. What do you mean you can't? You've just said you think you murdered someone. But I I can't be sure. It's something I... I sense rather than know. A feeling. That and no more. But there's got to be more. We've got to know more. I don't... I don't follow. If you have killed someone, your astral body or your Atman or whatever you call it, if you did then we'd better be prepared for whatever lies ahead. Junius, what do you mean? I mean, my dear, if a murder has been done... Oh, no! Ken, try to remember. Try. Ken? No, it's no use. I can't. And, And maybe I'm wrong. After all, it's just a feeling I have, a hazy feeling. A feeling that could be 100% wrong. Or 100% right. Ken, I'm going to speak frankly... You know I'm your friend and Mildred's. You know, both of you, that there isn't anything I wouldn't do for you. We know, Junius. But there are some things that go beyond friendship. Because they must. I carry the responsibility for the college and the people who made it. Ken, if you persist in continuing this dangerous, this disastrous experiment of yours, I shall have no recourse but to ask for your resignation. I'm sorry if asking you to come into headquarters has caused you any inconvenience, Professor. No, excuse me. Chief Langer? No. And hold all calls. No, no, no inconvenience, Chief. Not in the slightest. Uh, Professor, everybody likes you. But everybody is kind of puzzled by you. Now, listen, don't get me wrong. I mean... We can talk man to man, huh? Whatever that is, yes. Uh, what I mean is that little wife of yours... Now, don't get me wrong. She's got what every man looks at. You know what I mean? What every man wants. What is it you're, you're getting at? Why did you ask me to come here? Okay. Now I'll lay it out. How long since you slept with your wife... What business is that of yours? I'll tell you. Funny things happen in this town, things you wouldn't believe, but they happen. Like some men, well, I could mention names, big names in town. They got wives, some of them very attractive, but they uh, go to Rosie Smith. The town? Yeah. Well, so? You ever go to Rosie Smith? Of course not. Ever? Never. Well, she isn't as bad as all that, Professor. Look, will you please get to the point? Why Why am I here? Rosie says you tried to kill her. What? I tried to... Where were you 11 p.m. Wednesday night? Where was I? Yeah, where? Why, why at home. At home? Yes, at home. Rosie says you're at her place. Says she picked you up and took you there. And that you tried to strangle her. 
In fact, the way we put it all together, you thought you had strangled her and left her for dead. But she pulled out of it at the hospital. I don't know what it, what in the world you're talking about. You were at home Wednesday night at 11, you say? I was at home. Alone? No, my, my wife was there. Oh. And, and so was Dean Dutton. Oh? Your wife and Dean Dutton? Yes. 11 p.m.? 11 p.m. Well, then, you, uh... You couldn't have been with Rosie at her place, could you? No, I couldn't. You... You tried to kill her? Strangle her, she flanged to say. <sighs> the way they figure it, I... No, not me. Whatever it is, I've unleashed. Oh, Ken. Anyhow, they say I, the would-be murderer, left her for dead, but she recovered in the hospital. Yes, but why would you, of all people, have anything to do with a girl like that? Well, if it comes to that, why did I, my astral body, my, my other self, go to the cider mill in the first place? And above all, why did I try to kill Rosie? Millie. Millie, what am I to do? Well, I'd say there's only one answer to that, Ken. Stop. After all the years of preparation, the physical and mental hardships, disciplines, after all I've put you through... Oh, darling, you haven't put me yes, through Yes, I have. It hasn't been easy for you living with a man like me. Well, I didn't think it would be when I married you. <laughs> Things have been easy would... would be, be as close to each other as we are, as, as deeply in love. Oh, Millie. Millie, I, I don't know what I'd do without you, without your love, your understanding, your patience... I'll go. Oh, Junius. Is Ken at home, Mildred? Yes, come in. Hello, Junius. I I guess I've got a pretty good idea of why you're here. I just had a visit from Chief Langer. Ken, you've left me no choice. I must ask for your resignation from Mallory College. Now, now wait a minute, Junius. My dear good friend, I've waited far more than a minute... Wednesday night, I was forced to give you an ultimatum. That you either give up your experiments in astral projection or resign. I asked for a decision within 24 hours. You didn't give me one. I, I couldn't make up my mind. Ken, I can no longer aid and abet in your risking your reputation, perhaps even your life. I know, Junius, I know. You were right from the start. I was courting danger, possible disaster. And I knew it even when I began. Well, then why did you? No, you needn't answer that. Like all good scientists, you couldn't help yourself. You had to pioneer new routes into paranormal, explore new horizons, whatever the risk to yourself. But others are involved now. I'm afraid so. And I have no right to make them run risks. Rosie Smith, for one. So whether you still want my resignation or not, Junius, I'm giving up the experiment. You'll stop it? Cold. Oh, I can't tell you what a relief this is to me. I've been so worried about you, so almighty worried. You've got no idea. I think I have, Junius, and I'm grateful. But it's over now. Experiment ended. Caput. Fini. Let's have a drink on it. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I've said it before. I'm probably bored you saying it, but I firmly believe that there are some secrets of life God prefers to keep to himself. As I see it, if he'd wanted you to know about them, he wouldn't have made them secret. That makes sense. Sense I didn't appreciate till I... Ken? I was about to say till I tried to murder someone. What a frightful thing if I had. Yes, it would have been. But thank heaven it isn't. You suppose I can be of any help to the poor girl? Oh, in what way? Well, she's in the hospital because of me. Junius, would there be any way in which I might pay her expenses without her knowing, I mean? Here's your drink, Billy. Well, if it got out that you'd paid her bills, questions would be asked. Eyebrows raised. I know, I know. Still, I, I feel so absolutely awful about it all. H here you are, Junius. Oh, thanks. Well, let me look into it discreetly. We do have a fund for assisting people, students mainly, but I might manage something out of that. Good. Let's drink to that, too. Hmm. I give you the end of an experiment. Dangerous and, yes, foolish experiment. And thank God, continuing life for Rosie Smith. Right. Oh. 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 Junius, catch him! I've got him. Oh. 
Ken. Ken, you better get him out of the couch. What's happened to him? I don't know. He, he started to raise the glass to his lips and then dropped it, began to sway. State of collapse. Let me see. Oh, Junius. His heart beat is so faint I can scarcely get it. There's no pulse worth mentioning. Oh. Skin is cold, clammy. Uh, Eyes turned back in their sockets. Junius. Junius, does this mean... It means unless I miss my guess. It means Ken is no longer in control of his astral self. Oh. It means that regardless of Ken's plans for the future, his astral body, his other self, has different plans. Decidedly different plans. And so it would seem that, like Dr. Henry Jekyll, who, having released the vicious and murderous Edward Hyde, soon found Hyde in control, Professor Ken Robinson has unleashed a powerful and deadly force by tampering with the unknown, by seeking to unlock God's secrets, by rushing in where angels fear to tread. I'll return in a moment or so for Act Three. many of us unwittingly, thoughtlessly, unchain forces within ourselves, which in time, to our astonishment and horror, control us? How many happy relationships have been shattered by a single word that once spoken could not be recalled? How many? Now in the living room of Professor Ken Robinson's home, it becomes all too clear that another powerful and deadly force has been released an evil force bent on unholy destruction. Junius, what kind of plans? What? You said, regardless of Ken's plans for the future, his, his other self has different plans. And I have. Believe me, I have. Junius, look! There! Leaning against the mantel, it's, it's Ken! Heaven protect us. His body stretched on the couch, and yet he stands there by the fireplace. That thing on the couch is nothing. My earthly abode, that's all. What you see here is the real me. How, how is it I see you? I, I didn't see you before. How do I see you now? If you had any brains, Mildred, you'd be able to figure that out for yourself. You, uh... You, you've grown stronger. Each time you've left that body on the couch, your strength has increased. The more power you possess, the clearer your astral image becomes. Bravo! To the head of the class, Dr. Dutton. What... What plans do you have? What are you going to do? <laughs> Enjoy myself, that's all. Give full reign, total and complete freedom to every desire, Professor Kenneth Robinson. The well-loved and respected Professor Robinson. Try to restrain, to curb, to destroy. Ken, listen to me. Return to your body, to the good influences, the restraint. Straight jacket, not a body. <laughs> oh, but I'll return. Don't worry, I'll come back. But not until I've had my fun. What kind of fun? What are you planning to do? You'll find out. You'll find out. Oh, Junius! Heaven help us. What, what can we do? Nothing. And hope heaven does help us. And him... Sleepy, go Wait away. Wake up when I tell you. Oh, oh. Hey, what the devil are you? You. That's right, Rosie. Kenny, the happy play has returned. 
how'd you get in here? My door's double locked. Never mind, I don't care how you got in. Just get out. Now, don't get all strung out, Rosie. Don't get strung out after what you, you did to me last time. You damn near killed me. If at first you don't succeed... What? Try, try again. No. I wouldn't do that, Rosie. No, the police will take care of you. They didn't the last time, and they won't... <laughs> Look, look, let me alone. I, I never done you no harm. I just want to play, Rosie. That's all. No. Just some fun and games, Rosie. No, no. Junius? Mm. Are you sure Ken isn't... isn't dead? Uh, he, he's alive. Very slow pulse. But a pulse. His respiration. Oh, wait. I think he's... Is he coming to? I, uh... Ken. Ken, can you hear me? Uh, of course. I... I, I hear you, Junius. I, uh... Oh, Ken. Oh, Ken, dearest. No, but what, what, what's this all about? All, all I do is take a nap and you and Junius hovering over me like mother hands. What is this? Ken, you didn't just take a nap. You collapsed. Collapsed? Yes, and, and fell into a kind of coma, I guess you'd call it. Collapse? Coma? What in the world? Wait. My astro body. Yeah, I'm afraid so, my boy. It's, well, it suddenly took command of you, I suppose. Oh, no. no we actually saw you in two places at once. Here on the couch and there by the fireplace, leaning against the mantel. Good Lord. You, you even talk to us. Mildred, no. Maybe it's best he doesn't know what he said. I know. You... You remember what you said? May God in his infinite mercy help me. I do. I do. Oh, Ken! Junius. She's dead. Rosie Smith is dead oh. and I killed her horribly, cruelly. I killed her. Oh, no! Oh. You didn't kill her. A part of you, the, the same evil in you that's in all of us, but but not you. Not the man we know as Professor Kenneth Robb. I'd like to believe that, but no way. I recall all that happened. I understand all that happened, and I am at fault, 100%. But how can you say... Because of the evil thing I've let loose. I let loose, and no one else. And this evil thing is me. Is a part of me. You may say, Junius, I didn't murder Rosie Smith, but I did. Who are you phoning? The police. Chief Langley. Oh, wait, Ken, wait. Take a moment to think this There's out. nothing to be thought out. What's done is done. I'm a murderer. I must give myself up. Chief Langley. Yeah? I see. Bad as that. No, no, don't touch anything until I get there. And I just found Rosie like you said they would, Professor. But I don't... I don't get it at all. Don't get what? Tell me something, Professor. This stuff you teach at Mallory, this, uh... uh what's called para... Parapsychology. Yeah, well... Someone like you, an expert in that field, would you, uh... Well, it sounds nutty to me, but... Would you be able to know about things that were happening or had happened somewhere else? Or like, I mean, if you were at home, could you, well, I don't know, put yourself in some kind of trance or something like that where you could, well, you know, tell that somebody was murdering or had murdered Rosie Smith? Chief, I just told you I murdered Rosie. That's why I'm here. That's why I told you everything I did, where your men would find her body and the condition of it. I murdered Rosie Smith. Uh-uh. What do you mean? You couldn't have. Why not? Look, Professor. A couple days ago, Rosie accused you of trying to strangle her. You came in, we had a talk, and I let you go. But, Professor, I've had a tail on you ever since. Plain clothesmen around the clock, watching every move you made, and noting, carefully noting, where you were and what you did every hour, every minute of the day. 
I, I don't think I understand. It is now 20 after 5 in the afternoon. According to the report I got, you were in your house from 1.15 this afternoon till you left it at 4.30 to come directly here. You can't be in two places at once, Professor. But I can be. What? How's that again? I can be in two places at once. My, my body, this me, was in my home, all right. But another part of me, it's called the Atman, the other self, the astral body, can be and was in Rosie Smith's hospital room at the same time. I told you all this. Uh, yeah, 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 you told me. But you don't believe me. Professor, if I believed you, if I even let myself begin to believe you, I'd commit myself to the nearest funny farm. <laughs> and, Professor, I'd insist they throw away the key. Langner won't believe me, Junius. Ken, let me give you a drink. I don't need a drink. I think you do. It'll put you in a more rational state. Oh, rational. As close to rational as we both can get. To begin with, Ken, you'll never be able to persuade Chief Langner or anyone else that you killed Rosie Smith. But I did. That's a question I'm not prepared to debate with you. But I think we ought to discuss what are you going to do about bringing your astral self back to your Earth body and keeping it there? Junius, there's nothing I can do. Nothing? Your drink. Thanks. Nothing. And I see in your face, it's in your eyes, Junius. You know I can do nothing. That I'm helpless. Well, I'd hoped I was wrong. You have more expertise in these matters, and I hoped you'd say... No hope. I went too far. I... I... Junius, I... What is it? What is it? Uh, uh, Ken! Ken! It happened to him again. Get him onto the sofa. Just drop that hulk we call a body, Junius. Just throw it on the floor. That's all it's worth. Ken, I'm, I'm holding your body, but you were over there. Don't look and sound so shocked. You've seen this before. Enjoy seeing it while you can. Enjoy using your eyes while you can. What are you saying? For years I've put up with you, Dr. Dutton. You and your authoritative arrogance. What? No, no, we can't do this, my boy. Do that, my boy. Best for the college, my boy. Ken. Much as I regret it, I must demand your resignation, my boy. Well, you'll never ask for my resignation again, Dr. Dutton. Or for anyone's resignation. Ken. Wait. What are you doing? My throat! My throat! Let him go. What? Let him go. Before it's too late. Rosie. Rosie Smith, you... You're dead. Of course. You killed me. Then how... How can you be here? You're forgetting, Professor. Forgetting that you're on the astral plane now. And me being dead, so am I. And you think you can stop me from killing Dutton? Look, he's already unconscious. One more squeeze of my fingers around his throat. And you will be condemned to a hell. So frightful and so everlasting. Condemned to hell? The evil we do, we pay for. And right now you're on a real bummer of a trip. Better cool it. You, you don't scare me. Listen, Prof. That body you see on the floor. No, no, not Dr. Dutton's. Yours. You were born into it for just one 
Hey, here. How would I do it? Go back into his body, and you'll make it up all right. Because through him, the memory will be with you to the day you die. See you. Julius. Julius, what, what are you doing on the floor? What, what am I doing here? It happened again. And, and you tried to kill me, Ken. Oh, no, I, I couldn't have. I could never... Oh, yes. Yes, it's coming back. I'm... I'm remembering. I tried to kill you the way I killed Rosie Smith. Here. Ken, this... This can't go on. Somehow you... Got to find a way to... Regain control of your astral self. There must be a way, Ken. There is. I always knew it, but I'd forgotten it because... Well, Junius, I guess I'd forgotten God. There is one way. Always one way. When everything else fails. What? Prayer, Junius. Prayer. So a man who tampered with God's laws was saved. Thanks to God. I, too, have found... Oh, oh, no, don't get me wrong. Nothing so horrendous as what happened to Ken Robinson has ever happened to me. But I have found in my time that, indeed, when all else fails, prayer very often succeeds. How about you? Well, try it sometime. I'll be back shortly. well with Kenneth Robinson now, and so with Mildred, too. For years, Ken has stuck very closely to the much safer pursuits of ESP and precognition and uh, all that. And oh, yes, they have two children now, which, uh, it occurred to me, might be another form of astral projection. But then, what do I know? Our cast included Michael Tolan, Bryna Rayburn, Court Benson, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Draw the drapes while I light the candles. Now, step within the magic circle with me. Yes. Oh, great Erecto, mother of us all. Who crouch in the black shadow of your wings. I conjure the form of the instrument by Lucifer, a prince, prince of darkness, by all the stars which rule by the four elements, that we may obtain by thee the perfect issue of all our desires, which also we seek to perform without evil. Without deception. We are answered. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Uncle Ben's Long Grain and Wild Rice and Anheuser Busch Incorporated Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>